Be smart, it's your money. The Confident Homeowner with Matt Tabara. All right, everybody, Matt Tabara, the undercover contractor here on the Confident Homeowner Podcast. Today, I have with me a dear friend and special guest, Dave from Twin Home Experts. These guys are rock stars when it comes to leak detection, and they also detect something else, which we'll get into in a little bit here. But Dave, good to have you. Hey, thanks so much, man. Really proud of you offering all this amazing stuff for homeowners. And I just think it's, Scott, if we had more people like you in this industry, man, it would be, it'd be amazing. Well, you're one of them. And I appreciate you taking the time to, to get together and talk about this. You know, the goal being to really give the homeowners listening some specific advice. So when, when they finish this up, they go, wow, I know exactly what to do to kind of navigate this process. So we'll be covering a little bit regarding leak detection. And this could be water penetration in the home. It could be leaks in plumbing or sewage, or, you know, sometimes it's irrigation leaks. I won't spoil all the surprises, just give a little taste, but um, talk us through, Dave. I mean, what, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're a guru in the leak world here, man. Like this is, it's, it's not easy stuff. Like when, when do they call you and what is it, what do I need to know if I'm, if I'm hiring somebody to, to solve a leak problem? Yeah. You know, uh, so it really depends on the type of leak. Um, you know, we started off as plumbers uh, in the early nineties and the plumbing world really gave us a really good understanding of how a home is built. And um, we kind of fell into this whole detective world with, um, you know, just a homeowner going, you know, Dave, I've got this little leak here. Every time it rains, uh, you know, water's coming in and the roofer saying it's, it's his roof's fine. And the window guy saying that he installed his window. And can you figure out if, um, if you can help me out here and figure out where this leak is. And so it started to evolve uh, out of plumbing into some more inforensic leak detection, whether it be roofs, uh, windows, uh, st structure leaks. And uh, we just started spending a lot of time focusing on those type of leaks and uh, really became the leaders in the industry with uh, really solving these mystery leaks and something I'm really proud of. And, and it's amazing. We started actually creating a YouTube channel on educating the homeowner on what to do on how to find a window leak or a, a ceiling leak. And it's, it's really been extraordinary with the feedback that we're getting and all of the, the challenges that we're getting from all of that educational content that we're offering out there. So it's been super, super helpful. Yeah, I think you're you're why I was so excited to have you on here is because you're doing such a service to to the industry as a whole. Because not only are you someone who I view as a as a leader in the space, but also you're taking the time to do exactly what you know what we're doing here, which is to to educate on the processes and when to call and when to you know kind of how to navigate the 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 ocean here, this big old ocean of I've got a problem. Who do I call? I mean, leaks are something where it's like, like you said, it's like, could be the roof. It could be a crack in the stucco. It could be the windows. And, and a lot of what you do, um, and I think homeowners are a little bit scared or sometimes even hesitant to, because it's like, I always tell, tell homeowners, I'm like, look, where the water pools is not necessarily where the water is coming in. And you really have to trust whoever it is that you're bringing in to solve this issue. Because the downside is you spend money on something and you have no return. You have the same leak. And, and Matt, you hit it right on the money. That's one of the biggest, the biggest frustrations with a homeowner is, gosh, you know, the roofer said it's poss possibly the roof. So they spend thousands of dollars on putting a new roof in, windows, patio decks, waterproofing, and then the rain comes because they always wait. They got to wait six months or so. The rain comes and the same leak in the same spot. And they're, they're out thousands of dollars. So I think from a homeowner's perspective, I would really encourage anybody out there that owns a home that's having a very tricky leak. Don't make assumptions. Figure out exactly where that leak is and then go from there. Uh, it's super important because, again, I've seen it over and over again where the homeowner is just they're out thousands and thousands of dollars and that leak is still present in the same spot. 
Yeah, and two two quick things. One came to mind was a leak, and we've we've dealt with this before with you guys in particular. Is a leak could just mean dampness or excessive moisture too. It doesn't always mean. I think sometimes you know homeowners might think, well, a leak is this gushing big amount of water, but it could just mean constant moisture or damp walls when it rains that contributes to mold and health hazards, which you know you guys I'm sure have seen far too often, but it, it's got to be really hard for a homeowner where a roofer comes out, you know, you call a roofer because you, you know, you, you think for whatever reason, that's the first place you go. And the roofer says, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, it's, it's a roof leak. I'm 99% sure. I can't guarantee it, but I'm 99% sure. And it's hard. You want to believe that person, right? Like you want to be like, oh, I trust them. And, and then right. you get to the bottom of the line and, and you, you go through all these different people. Hopefully you end up with someone like you guys, ideally in the very beginning, not at the end. Right. But now it's like, well, how do I trust, you know, you kind of navigating that process? Like, how do I, how would I find as a homeowner, uh, uh, an expert? What does it mean to be an expert? How do you delineate or distinguish these? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, that's a really good question. I know, I know it's hard to find guys like us to go in and, and do that. Um, but I think if it's the contractor saying, Hey, it's the roof or Hey, it's the deck or Hey, they need to hold themselves accountable for that and say, look, I'm going to replace your deck. It's going to be 10,000 or whatever it is. And if that leak persists, I'm willing to refund your entire money that you, you, you paid me. So I would, I would tell the homeowner, if you've got a roofer or somebody telling you that, oh, it's got to be, it's got to be this, then they need to be held accountable to make sure that that they're going to get a refund or they're not going to be out thousands of dollars. And that's what we do is we put ourselves out there on the line, go look at, we're going to pinpoint this leak for you. And if we can't, there's no charge to you whatsoever. And that's how we operate. We try to be as, you know, as helpful as possible. Uh, we're not the cheapest guys in town, but it does take a lot of skill set technology to detect these leaks. And, you know, thank God, knock on wood, we haven't walked away without finding uh, an issue for a homeowner. That feels pretty good. I think that's why we can <laughs> offer that guarantee. What I'm getting at is technology has changed so much going back from you know when I was a kid 20, 25 years ago. And so talk a little bit about some of the technology that you'd expect an expert to have to arm these homeowners with. If your expert doesn't have this, potentially it, it might not be the person you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. The, the technology has really been a huge it, a competitive advantage for us to, to, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that gets up at three 30 in the morning and I'm checking out like the latest and greatest gadgets that will give us that competitive advantage. Um, one of them is uh, our UV non-toxic smoke technology that puts out an abundance amount of smoke without creating any cross contamination into a, a, an environment. Uh, meaning we can go into an office space and it'd be 50 secretaries working. We can go in there and blow this smoke everywhere and it's not going to, to cause any harm. Um, and that's something that I found that's been amazing to find window leaks, deck leaks. So, uh, and no one's, I've never seen anybody use that type of technology. We also use it for uh, sewer odors, you know, that uh, people can't find. We're able to use that technology to pinpoint that type of uh, small leaks or breaches that are that are causing uh, havoc to, to homeowners so yeah the technology is great and then you know there's some older style equipment like uh the acoustic equipment uh that's been around for a long time we still use that for water pipes um, our micro cameras and sewer cameras that we use to feed down pipes some of the older electronic leak detection still works to this day um we use that for all of our water pipes and listening devices inside walls and stuff. So, you know, it really depends on the situation. But yeah, technology, we're always trying to figure out new ways to, to really help facilitate some of these difficult uh, leaks that we're always uh, trying to find for homeowners. But yeah, yeah I think a homeowner that uh, is experiencing a plumbing leak, some of the questions to ask a contractor is, hey, what type of equipment do you have? Uh, do you subcontract that out or do you do it in-house? Because a lot of times plumbers will go out, but they don't really have the experience and the knowledge to detect leaks. So then they bring a third party in. And I think that that right there causes a little disconnect for the homeowner. 
So I think the homeowner just needs to deal directly with the experts. So again, there's no disconnects. It streamlines the process a lot better. That would be a helpful tip from my standpoint, just from all the customers that I've seen over the years get frustrated with, with this type of work. What, what are the most common leaks and, and areas that you see that a homeowner should be on the lookout for? Like you mentioned sewer, right? A, you know, a light sewer smell. I know some homeowners get accustomed to that and they're like, well, I had somebody out and they said it was no big deal. And so they get a whiff every now and again. And so what are like the common areas that you see that there is actually a bigger underlying issue, but to a homeowner, you could just, you know, cause you're not doing it every day. You might just walk by and think, oh, no big deal. Yeah. Well, sewer odors, you know, I would say 99% of the time, homeowners cannot deal with that nauseated smell. I mean, we're getting calls all the time. Again, that's a lot of uh, YouTube video content that we produced out there. And it's it's crazy on some of the things that we find. Uh, the latest uh, a sewer odor that we found was a guy out in Orange County who remodeled his house about eight years ago. And had an electrician, I've never seen this in 30 years of my career, electrician ran his drill through the ceiling and it went right through the toilet pipe, the wire. And he pulled the wire through the toilet pipe, not realizing it. And he's been having a sewer odor ever since. And no one's been able to detect it. Uh -huh. So we brought out all our you know, smoke testing and all our cameras. We went out there. He found us on YouTube, went out there, smoke test. We got a little bit of a smoke coming out of the return air conditioning. I pulled the return off and it was just a real tight space, but I knew I had to get my head inside there. So I'm crawling under there, man, squeezing my body going, oh my God, I hope I, I, hope I can get out of here. But I turned my head down the joist and there it was, just smoke spewing out. We opened up the ceiling, and there it was, a wire going through a sewer pipe. Wow. It was, it was unbelievable. And it had been there for how long, you think? It's been there for, he was fighting it for seven years. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, one of the things that I really want to, especially in California, a lot of the leaks that seep in, you were talking earlier, Matt, about you know, the moisture, the slow leaks, those cause the most damage to a home. And what we're finding is a, a fungus called porea incrisata. We call it the house eating fungus. And literally, if there's any sort of contaminated roots right up against the house with moisture, that fungus will grow up inside the walls and start eating at the suck the nutrients out of the wood and it's like the blob it'll just wreak havoc and eat up the entire house wow so we're having to go and investigate how that porea and crusada is growing into a home and uh, people don't realize it until they start to see we call it a vomiting effect of this fungus that will will literally start to vomit through the electrical baseboards through the windows oh. and they'll just wake up one morning and see that. And then they go, what is that? And mold experts will come out and then say, Hey, we can't touch this. This is a, a fungus. You need an expert in that. And that's something we have to go in and, and detect how water is seeping into the home first, and then find out where this porea and crusada is um, growing in from, it could be a root growing 20 feet from the home. Do you, are you a proponent? I, I, uh, met with elite group home inspections and, and they were, they were on the show and we talked a lot about the need to really do preventative maintenance and to get, you know, catch things earlier on. What are your thoughts on, on like a, an annual inspection of, of the home in terms of leaks? Do you think that there's enough leaks going on in homes that, that it's warranted? Do you think it's something every six months or two years? Or, or do you really wait until you see the, the vomiting effect or the sewer odor? I mean, what, are, what is your finding in that? Yeah, that's super good. That's super, super. That's a great question, but super important for the homeowner, especially if you live in a crawl space. I don't know how many times I've been to a call, hundreds where homeowners just never inspect underneath their house. And then until one day they get a horrible sewer smell or they get that fungus. So I would have someone 
crawl underneath that crawl space at a minimum once a year, every six months. Just take a quick peek, a, a bright flashlight, and just take a look under there, especially after a heavy, heavy rain. I think that really says a lot about your home, that if, if, if there's a heavy rain and you don't have any moisture source coming into your crawl space or the dirt's not wet, that's a good sign that you've got good structural integrity within the foundation. Your waterproofing is good. You're not having wa any water intrusion. But a lot of people don't do that, especially after a heavy rain. They just assume everything is fine until porea kicks in or you start getting a bunch of mold and fungus growing underneath your house because, again, preventative maintenance will save them thousands and thousands of dollars. And I find that the more ethical the contractor, and I'd consider you to be one, I mean, you know, pretty much everybody, I would say everyone I have on the show, I consider to be that, the more ethical I find somebody is, the more we're all proponents of that type of maintenance. It's not like, I think we get a little, the contracting industry is funny because I think sometimes the, the negative spin is that we want the big bad jobs. Like I get more fulfillment out of being like, hey, that small crack, if you fix it now, it's 500 bucks. If you wait two years, it's six grand. You know, I get more fulfillment out of the maintenance, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and, and that's so true. And that's kind of where I'm at in my career is that I think the more contribution you add, the more transparency you offer, you know, especially with, again, with homeowners having a crawl space, I think it's super important to do a, a very thorough inspection. Um, at least, again, after a heavy rain, I think people just assume everything is fine. So really spend the time to crawl under there with a bright flashlight and just kind of observe your structure, make sure the soil's not damp so you don't get any of those secondary damages that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. That Perea job, we just finished a Perea job where this homeowner uh, was all excited about doing their bathroom remodel and their bathroom remodel company came out, they did all the demo and the entire structure of inside of their walls was completely eaten from this fungus, all because of a water leak that was migrating into their their walls. Do you think there's under, under you, you think there's underlying health health issues? I mean, have you seen molds where where getting into that? I mean, have you seen like like issues where there's serious health concerns and and they had very little idea you, where you demo something? And you're like, this is like, you know, not only is it extremely costly, but for your health. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, and that's what I refer to as secondary damages. So. You know, if a leak persists and you don't know about it, we're talking uh, mold like the black mold, which is called stachybotrys. We've got uh, Aspergillus penicillium, but even funguses, even though it's not considered an allergen, the fungus, because it releases moisture, it breeds other molds and contaminants, causing a lot of uh, indoor air quality issues. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, geez, there's just, there's, there's a lot to, I, I'm seeing a trend. Cause like I said, you know, I had a leak group here. We all, all of us are really advocates for, for inspections, for maintenance, for the things that, that ultimately save the homeowners lots of money because, you know, you, nobody feels good when you rip open a bathroom and you're like, Hey, there's $15,000 worth of, you know, remediation work of something that you get no benefit from. You don't see it. It's not pretty. It's not fun. I mean, I, none of us want, want to see that. There's actually something else that you found in some walls that I want to touch on real quick before we close out. Um, talk to me really quick about this, this, this venture that you've, you've kind of discovered um, and, and very quickly became a, a, a leader in. I mean, well, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah and that's going to be the, the rodent infestation or the rat infestation. Yeah, it's crazy, Matt. I uh, never thought that I would be an expert in solving rat infestation uh, in, in my career. Never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be the leader and it's really taken off. Uh, since COVID hit uh, and restaurants shut down, the rat population has migrated and been very aggressive into going into people's homes. Uh, they've gotten into the city sewer and so uh, one day we get a call from a pest control company. This is how it all started. Uh, we get a call from a pest control company. It says, hey, you know, we saw you guys uh, do all this detective work on your YouTube channel for finding sewer odors. Can you guys come help us out and facilitate how these rats are getting in? And uh, my office said, hey, Dave, do we 
help out with, oh yeah, well, let's go and let's see, see what, what, this, what this is all about. So I'm up on the roof with this pest control guy and we're getting our smoke machine set up. And I'm like, hey, tell me a little bit about why we're here and how rats are getting into the sewer line. He says, well, what's happening is this, the rats come in from the city. They get jump into the lateral lines, which is the sewer line dedicated to the house. They crawl up there, they get into the waste system, and then they chew their way through into the walls or into the attic area. And I'm like, you're kidding me. So I tell this guy, hey, can, can you move, move, move to the side a little bit? And I shot a YouTube video. It was my first YouTube video. I'm like, hey, guys, we're here on this call to detect how rats are getting into this home. And how they're getting in is, and I just used that guy's information and did a YouTube video on it. And from that, that video on, we're getting about 700,000 views a month on YouTube because of the devastation that these rats are causing homeowners across the United States. So we're doing a lot of educational videos on how to hunt these rats down because Matt, I, I, it's amazing, astonishing how smart these rats are. I mean, they, some of these rats are so smart, they're getting a stick and activating the rat traps, dropping the stick, and then they go in and they eat the bait. Oh That's how gosh. smart these rats are. Yeah, these are post-COVID rats, man. They 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 have to get smarter. I mean, the food source isn't probably like you said as available. So I mean, this is yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's it's been it's been incredible on the number of stories and the the devastation that they're causing uh, to people's homes is is amazing. Right now, we're just finishing up a job where we pulled uh, almost 23 rats out of this lady's house. And they've just destroyed her kitchen and furniture and chewing her antiques. And I mean, it's a serious, serious devastation on a family. So we're really spending a lot of our time and educating ourselves to get better and better because a lot of pest control companies aren't able to solve it. So they're turning to us to come in and help facilitate these. So that's kind of the direction that I'm really passionate about now is, is using our leak detection equipment and, and teaching and consulting pest control companies across the U.S. to really go in and solve these massive uh, rodent issues. Well, yeah, I mean, nobody wants on, you know, guests that aren't paying rent. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> their homes, but it, it, especially, I mean, I remember growing up, we had a squirrel, um, in the walls and that, that noise. I mean, when you hear that noise in your wall, it is like something that you will never, I, I still to this day can hear that scratching noise. And it was like next to like in, in next to my bedroom as a kid. And it was like this. And I'm like, that's in the wall. That's not outside. That's like, that's a whole nother, you know, yeah. We, well, we had a we had a customer recently that actually changed his sleeping schedule. He sleeps during the day and then does his work at night because the scratching sounds were so bad. He he couldn't have a normal sleeping schedule. That's how serious it is. Yeah. Well, I think you know, I I love what you're doing, Dave. I mean, what are so l let's look at the let's look at the the rodent side of things too, and and the rodent detection quickly as we close out here. What what are some? I mean, this is a whole you know, a whole, and I, I see the progression of, of why you got into it. And, and like, how does a homeowner, how would you start there? I mean, I think your YouTube channel is a great, a great place to start educating themselves. But so would you say, start with the pest control company? Or would you say, you know what, unfortunately, if you have something that isn't like, how would you, how would you navigate that? Yeah. One of the questions that we get when a homeowner calls us for scratching sounds or rodent infestation is, Hey, have you reached out to a local reputable rodent company? And that's where we always say, look, if you haven't had any uh, local reputable rodent companies come to your home, start there first, because that's going to be the, the least expensive. You never know. It could just be one little small opening on the roof or on the side that a, a pest control company is pretty good about spotting it. But we're, and then if that doesn't work after two weeks or three weeks and you continue to have the activity, that's when you call us so we can bring in our team 
our skill set, our technology to come and, and, and pinpoint it. So yeah, we always say start with a rodent company first. If that doesn't work and you're still having rodent activity after two to three weeks, because it should be, you should hear any, if, if the rodent company did their job and they sealed and found the entry points, you shouldn't have any rodent uh, activity after a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, um, but, and, and the other thing is we're seeing a lot of, and what I really want to encourage homeowners to do is if you've got a lot of rat infestation in an attic area, what we're seeing is a lot of pest control companies are removing all of that insulation. And then the next day they're pumping in brand new insulation, but they really haven't confirmed that the rodent infestation has stopped. And what happens, all that brand new in, uh, insulation in the attic now becomes contaminated with urine, rat droppings. And so we always say, pull the insulation, sanitize, treat, monitor for a couple of weeks, make sure you have no more activity. Then three weeks or a month, come back and do the insula insulation. That's really a big, big uh issue that we're seeing in the pest control industries are so excited to just get the job they're pulling the insulation and then going right back with it but they haven't really solved mrs jones problem and then they're back to square one again with all of those contaminants so it's a big that's a big key there that i really want to let homeowners know is just be patient don't be in a rush with putting your insulation back until you know for sure you've stopped the rat infestation well, Dave, I mean, I think we covered a lot. You're like the modern day Ghostbusters of rodents here. It's like call it the, you know, call it the heroes when you need it done and done right and done once. And I, I think I love to joke and be funny, but I think that, you know, what you're doing is so is so admirable because it's you're really taking the the and, and for homeowners, I, I, I think I want to make the distinction because like what you're doing, Dave, is you're all the low hanging fruits been picked. Right. So you're you're stepping up and doing the stuff that's that's hard to do. That's hard to find that requires you to give these, these guarantees where you're really putting your neck out on the line on every job. And so I think one of the key takeaways for homeowners that I want to give is that if you're going to hire somebody to solve these hard to get problems, and you said this earlier, Dave, but to summarize is, is make sure that they're willing to stick their neck out for what it is that they're doing. And, you know, I mean, cause you do that on every job. I think that's, I mean, that's, it's just like, it's fascinating to me that all the low hanging fruit, all the easy leaks, all the easy, like basically what you're saying is the easy rodents, you know, those simple things, which are probably quick and easy money, fast money, you know, are, are gone and you're coming in for the hard cases. So I just, right. I think it's admirable that you do that and everything that you do. I, I really appreciate your time here. Oh, no, thank you, man. I really admire what you're doing. Um, I get inspired by what, what you uh, are offering this industry, which is much needed. So I really, really praise you for that, man. Thanks, Great Dave. Job. Great Thank work. you.